right, good morning everyone. This is Miss Nell. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great first kind of part of the week with your online learning. Um, you know, we really miss getting to see all of you, but I am excited to connect with you over this video. Today, if you can guess by my shirt, I am going to be going over some basic soccer moves with you. So if you didn't know, I played soccer for almost 15 years and I coached for a little bit too. And there's some basic skills that everyone needs to know, whether you're playing a pickup game with your siblings and your friends, or if you're doing a more competitive league. It's basically how well can you control the ball and how well can you determine where you pass it and how you receive it. So in this video, we're going to go over a little bit about how to do that. To start, everyone will need two things. You will need a wall or a friend if you have a friend to pass with or a sibling. I'm here alone, so I only have my wall. And you're gonna need a ball. I have a soccer ball, so that's what I'm gonna use. I have a size five, which is the largest size that they make, but you start small, you usually start with a one, and then you build your way up. And by the time you're in like fourth or fifth grade, you usually play with a five, and that's just the largest size ball. Um, if you don't have a soccer ball, you can try it with a basketball, really anything round that you can kick. If you don't have that, honestly, you can practice it without a ball. The reason why I say you can practice it without a ball is you're developing something called muscle memory. Has anybody ever heard of that term before? Okay, muscle memory is what happens when your body does uh, a motion enough times that it remembers how to do it on its own. So think about brushing your teeth. You don't tell yourself, okay, I'm going to brush my teeth, so I stick the toothbrush in my mouth, and I go up and down ten times, and I switch it over. You've done it enough that you just kind of do it naturally. And that's what you're hoping to develop right now with a soccer ball, is how do I build up these motions so if a ball is passed to me, or if I'm in possession of the ball, how can I get rid of it in a way that I know it's going where I want it to go? Does that make sense? Like I said, you can do this with a friend or you can do it by yourself with a wall. I'm gonna use my wall and you can see that my wall doesn't really have any doors or windows, right? And part of the reason is, is that if I'm kicking the door, it's gonna change how my pass works. So I won't know if I'm doing it correctly or not. And if I'm kicking a window, I have the possibility of breaking it. So I'm gonna to choose to use the wall um, because it's flat and I know that I will be doing my passes correctly and I'll know if my form is working or not start with a basic pass and you have your ball and you want to be kicking it roughly about a third of the way down the ball from the height and about in the middle of the ball and you're going to be wanting to use the inside of your foot and when I say the inside I mean this part right here so you see my foot and where it will be connecting with the ball the other one you want next to it not so far away that you're kind of awkwardly trying to figure out what to do and not so close that when you swing it you kick your own foot but you want it next to it so you know where the ball's going. This foot here is going to determine where the ball goes. If my foot's this way, the ball will be going that way. If my foot's this way, the ball will go that way. So, my foot should be straight, and I'll be using the inside of my foot. Now, I am right-footed, so I use my right foot to kick. If you are left, handed, you might be left-footed, you might be right-handed, you just kind of have to figure out what works for you. So you will swing your leg back, and then you will follow through making sure that your ankle is locked. If you have a floppy ankle and you kick it, it kind of just goes all over the place. Whereas if you have a firm ankle and you kick it, it will come back exactly to where you were. Through it, you will put your foot next to the ball, you will swing through with a solid locked ankle, and then the ball comes right back to me. Left-footed people, I could do the same thing. I put my right foot next to the ball, and this time I'm swinging with my left foot, and my ankle is still locked. That doesn't change regardless of what foot I use. I swing and I hit, and then the ball comes right back to me. So now that you know how to pass the ball, let's talk about one of the most important skills in all of soccer, is how you stop the ball. If someone passes the ball to you, or you're playing defense and you receive the ball, and you don't know how to stop it, and the ball goes flying off of your foot, and you have to turn and run, you're already behind. You're already playing defense. You haven't controlled the ball. So let's talk about what to do if you're receiving the ball. Now, there's two different ways that you can receive the ball. The first is by putting your foot on top of the ball, and we'll go over that right now. 
The first way of stopping the ball that we're going to talk about is stopping with your foot. And you want to try and stop the foot with kind of the pad of your foot. You don't want to use your heel because it doesn't have that much control and there's not as much of a hold on the ball. And you don't want to use your tippy toes because you, you can see that just kind of slides. You want to use the top of your foot. And a good way to practice for this is, is you can do toe taps. So you just can tap up and down on the ball and it shows you what part of the foot you need to have contact with. Okay? So if I were to receive a pass, let's see, and I want to stop it with the top of my foot, I'm only using that first little bit of my foot, if you can see where that is. And this may take a little bit of practice, honestly. I mean, practice makes perfect, and everybody makes mistakes. There's times where I receive a pass, and I still miss it, okay? So it's really just practicing. It's sometimes easier if somebody else passes the ball to you because it can be a little bit harder, and you don't have as much control over it. Um, but you can practice against the wall and practice stopping it with the top of your foot, okay? The second way of stopping the ball is what I like to call a side stop, and let me show you what that looks like. A side stop is when you use the same part of the foot that you pass with to stop the ball, and you just slam your foot on the ground. You can make a noise as you practice, but you want to make sure that the ball is connecting with this part of your foot. If it connects with the back end, it's going to tail and spin off, and the same thing if you connect with the top, it's just going to roll right over it. So you want to stop it with this center part of your foot here. And when you slam it down, it will cause the ball to spin and stop at your foot. So let's see if I can do this. It may take me a couple of times, and that's okay. And then we just stop it. So you can see the ball spun a little bit, but it stopped in front of my foot, which is where I want it. Because now I'm in the proper position that I could pass it to somebody else. Now you have the basics of how to pass the ball and how to stop it. And you can practice this on your own. You can do what we call two touch passes, which is where you pass the ball and then stop it before passing it again. Or you can do one touch, which is where you don't stop the ball, you just pass it back and forth. So let me show you what that looks like. Just you pass the ball to yourself, you stop it, you pass it again, you stop it, you pass it. I'm getting a little off point here. But see, that's what it would look like if you were doing two touch passes. Now if you're doing one touch, it's just you passing back and forth to yourself. And we can use our left foot. You can do this as hard or as soft as you want. That's really up to you. Sometimes that you're going to have to pass really far downfield, right? It's not just that you're passing to somebody who's a few feet away from you. You're going to have to kick it far away. And so let me show you what that looks like because it's a little bit different form. When you're going to kick the ball, you use the same form as if you were going to shoot. And you're not using this inside part of your foot anymore. You're now going to use what's called the laces. So you have your laces. I'm wearing tennis shoes. You can wear cleats, whatever you have. But your laces, and you want to go just a little bit to the inside. So because I'm right-footed, I'm looking right where this seam connects between my outer part of my shoe and my laces. So I want to try and kick right here. If you're left footed, it's the same thing. It is your laces, the outside part, and you're aiming for that kind of seam line. Okay, and you want to try and make sure that you are kicking somewhere in the center of your ball. If you kick it on this side, it's going to steer off to your left. And if you kick it on the outside, it will go kind of funky and go off to your right. You'll have a weird spin. So. You want to make sure that this part, the seam that we were just talking about, is connecting with the ball first. And so what you'll do is you'll stand a couple steps away from the ball. And usually it's one step in, one step to the side. Remember, your leg that's pointing forward shows which way the ball is going to go. And then your foot is going to come and connect with that ball. And you can see that I'm tapping it right where I said I was going to with that seam right there. So you'll step through and then you'll land on that front foot. You can see the ball went straight forward because I followed through with my leg and it went this way. Now if I'd followed through and stepped over, the ball would have spun off and gone off to the left. I find it easier just to practice the standing and not actually kicking the ball at first. So you just take that first step in, that second step to the side, and then just practice what it would look like if you were going to kick the ball but not actually kicking it. Once you get really used to it, you may find that you want to practice a running start.
and what would that look like? I really hope that this video will help you all build up the muscle memory of how to best control the soccer ball. You know, making sure that when we're practicing our passes, that we're having locked ankles, that we're hitting the ball in the middle of the ball and not on the top or the bottom of it, that when we are shooting the ball, that we're using the seam in between our laces and the outside of our shoe, and that when we're stopping the ball, we're making sure that it's stopping in front of us and not far to the side or behind us because then we'd have to run after it. So these are basic skills that anyone who wants to play soccer will need to know. Um, and I would really encourage you to take the time that we have to get outside and practice.